Let's open the Word today. Look at some things. God's, uh, God's doing good things. I think, I think I'm on a series. I think everything that I've preached in the last month or go together, but I don't know. I, I, I don't really have series, so <laughs> we don't know about that. But let's look at Ephesians 15, Ephesians 4, 5, 15, 5, 5, 5. We're going there. I, mean, got, I got things running through my head and my heart at the same time that I'm looking at this. So, You know, God, God builds a message when you start studying for it, but then when you get up here, the anointing even gets stronger and that message becomes bigger in you than it was before you started. Amen? And, uh, and, and the things of God are important. So, you know, we don't want to just say, well... A, B, C, D. You know, I don't want to have my plan. I want to have his plan. His, his plan and, ha- and the way he's going to bring it out is the right way. And so that's what we're looking for today. Amen? Amen. Everybody with me? Yes. All right. Do we need to put our hands in? Go team. All right. <laughs> Ephesians 5, verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly. And since I don't even know what circumspectly means, I'm sure I could figure it out if I looked long enough because I am a professor. Let's go to the NIV. (laughs) Be careful then how you live. In other words, watch how you live. In In other words, you can't, you know, we got a lot of people that spend time watching over other people's lives. You know, half the calls I might get in a week would be somebody calling me about somebody else. And I'm like, well, why are you calling me about them? Right? First of all, if you knew about it, why aren't you helping? <laughs> Whew, wow. Got a, got a cold breeze over there just a second. It was the air conditioners, I'm sure. Huh? But, but this says, look at your own life and Why? Because you're a child of God and your life is purpose. Your life is full of the purpose and plans of God. And and those purpose and plans are big plans. Uh, And and if you spend all your time seeking wealth or all your time seeking stuff for you, then you're missing the true plan of God. Amen? Amen? Because you're spending your time on you. Right? How many know God's not selfish? Right? So God's kids wouldn't be selfish, right? Because they'd be like him. What would we do wrong with Ramsey? No, she's not selfish. <laughs> no, Ramsey's not selfish. Right? And so the things we do, the things we look towards, the things we, we say, the, uh, the, our purpose when we walk out the door in the morning is not a selfish purpose. Our purpose is to do everything that God has for us to do in that day. Amen? Amen? Everything that he has to do for us in that day is not just going to be your job. It's not just going to be uh, making money so that you can live your life. So that th- your, Everything you have to do in that day may be way more than you ever imagined. And that's why if you look at this verse, keep, keep, put, it, put it back, not, and it says, watch how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. And what's he saying? It, it's not just that you are, are trying to show everybody how wise you are, but you are trying to live as a wise person. In other words, you have answers. Wise people have answers. Wise people are people that other people look to. So see that you're living a life that other people can look to you in a time of need. Amen? See, look look at your life and say, okay, what am I doing that would encourage somebody to look to me if something was wrong? And, and if we're not acting like God, then people aren't going to come to you. And if they do come to you and you're not acting like God, then you're going to give them an unwise answer. But if we're, if, if we're trusting God for everything we're supposed to do, then, then we'll walk in His wisdom and we'll say things that are beyond what we even... People will ask you things and you'll say, and you'll give an answer and you'll go, wow, I didn't even know that. <laughs> right? I don't know where that answer came from. I didn't even know that. Amen? Yes. But, but to live this way 
is, is a very unselfish lifestyle. It is a lifestyle that's going to pull you away from the things that you had planned that day. Did you know that? Did you know that? Living, living a God-like lifestyle will pull you away from your plan almost every day of the week. Because you woke up and you were planning to do this. And so I think that's why he said, don't, don't say you're going to go off here and go off here, but say if it be the Lord's will, we're going to do that. Right? Because what he's saying is, I got lots of things along that path where you're going to stop. You're going to have to stop here. And, and if you actually go back to the King James and look at verse 16, it says, redeeming the time. So what's he saying? Make the most of every moment every day. In other words, don't just think about your plan. Think about God's plan because God's plan makes the most of your time. It makes the most of everything you're going to do. Why? Because the days of evil, what days are evil? What's he saying? People are hurting. There's things out there that people need from you today. There's things that I want for you to do. There's, there's word that I want for you to put out. There's, there's somebody that needs a hug. There's, don't just pass by and think you being there was enough. Do what, you, do what you're supposed to do while you're there because the days are evil. People are dying and going to hell. Right? It's, it's not a good thing. But if we don't put that in our head every day and we don't care about it, then, then we're not redeeming the time because you're walking by somebody every day that does not know Jesus Christ. Amen. You, you're going to, you know, in this church, um, not long ago, we were um, at, Kim, at Kim's last appointment for uh, what she went, what we went through this past year. Um, she went through chemo. Everybody doesn't know that. Now, you know. Right? There you go. And uh, she's clear. Everything's good. God helped us. He's faithful. He's a faithful God. Amen? And, but, but the thing was, was when we decided to go through this, we prayed and said, God, which direction to go? And we went through it. We did. It's, if, if you're a husband and you think they go through it, or if you're a wife and think they're going through it, no, you're going through it together. And, and it's a big deal to, to stay in faith together, no matter which direction you choose to go with it. Amen? Make sure you're in faith. But as we did it, we said, you know what? We're going to make a difference every time we walk into those hospitals, every time we walk in a waiting room, every time we walk in to the, to the uh, therapy, chemotherapy room, every time we see any doctor, we're going to make a difference. We're not going to be the one that's sad and upset. We're not going to be the one that's, that's crying and down. We're going to be the ones that's up and believing God. We're going to be a witness to the things of God. Amen? Amen. You know, people, what better place to be? Because you know what? Most of the people we were seeing, they, they, were, they, had, they had death all over them. That, you know, you tell somebody they got to go through chemo and all of a sudden they think they're dying. Yeah. Guess what? They're not. Right. right? God's a good God and he, he, he can use so many ways to bring healing. But, but where you're in faith, that's where he's going to work. But needless to say, we, we went in there every week and God gave us opportunity after opportunity to use the things that we had been taught in these services to witness to other people. And, and the one that stood out to me the, was the very last time we went. And there was, a, there was an older gentleman in there. And they, they had given him no hope. They'd said, you're, you're not going to make it. And he was well of age. And he had accepted that he was not going to make it. Now, I could, we could have said, oh, no, let's pray that you'll make it, let's pray. He didn't have that in his heart. You know, praying what you want and praying what they can receive are two different things. Don't, don't pray what you want. You know, that, that's not going to help people. So we sat there and listened for a little while. He wasn't talking to us. We were just in the same room and they were talking loud enough we could hear. So we're sitting there listening for a while. And, you know, his, his son was with him and... His son, I think, was older than me because this was a fairly older gentleman. And uh, he, said, he said, well, you know, we're going to do this, Dad, but, you know, at the end of this, they say it's just going to get worse and worse, and then you're going you're to leave. And his dad said, well, he said, that's the hard thing. He said, I don't know. 
And I don't know how he put it, but he said, I don't know how to die. I don't know what to expect. I don't want to go through the pain. I don't, I don't know what happens. In other words, I, I'm afraid of death. And immediately everything Brother Moore had taught in victory over death began to come up in me. Now, he couldn't receive everything that we had learned in victory over death in that two minutes. But what he could receive, and my first question, I leaned over because he was down this way for me. And I looked at him and I said, do you know Jesus? Well, what's the most important question you can ask somebody? Whether they're leaving tomorrow or whether they're leaving 30 years from now, the most important question you can ask somebody is, do you know Jesus? Because if he knows Jesus, things are going to be good. Right? We've got teaching. We've got scripture. We know he's going to a great place. He's going to see people that, that went on before him. We, he's going to experience God face to face on a level. And he's not going to be thinking about pain or anything else. It's going to be a good day. He's had a lot of good days in his life, but the day he leaves this earth will be his best day. Amen? And I, and I know that's hard for all of us maybe sitting here to just say that, but it's true. We know that because of what we've been taught. And I looked over at him and said, do you know Jesus? And his son and him both looked at me and said, oh yeah. And so now we're able to minister. We're able to say, yeah, well, it's going to be good. Let me tell you, the, the pain that you're, you're he's going to take away all the pain. They're, everything that you're going through, right? it's going to be gone. You're gonna, your wife went before you, she'll be waiting on you. You know, you, and, and you could feel him coming up. This is an encouragement. The word of God is an encouragement. And I didn't know this man, but that day I was his neighbor. Why? Because... That's where God put me at the right place, at the right time, with the right ability. It's not just being there. It's being there with what God has for you to do that day. And we can make a difference because we, we need to redeem the time. We need to uh, make the most of every opportunity. Every person, no matter what they're going through, needs to know Jesus. You know, this arguing over whether you should speak in tongues, healing, all these things that get argued over. You know what? In heaven, there's not going to be an argument over them anymore. Right? No arguments over that. Let's stop arguing. Believe the Word of God. It's true. He heals every person who ever wanted to be healed. He healed them 2,000 years ago. It's a foregone conclusion. I don't want to argue about that. Do you know Jesus? Do you know my Lord? Because that's the one way to heaven. I want you to live a great life on this earth, but until you know Jesus, I can't even tell you how good God is beyond that. You got to taste the goodness of God before you can experience all the goodness of God. Amen? And, and, and the churches have gotten into this, well, they believe this, they believe that. You know what? They believe in Jesus Christ. Amen? And that's what's important. You want to be somebody's neighbor, find out first if they believe in Jesus Christ. Then tell them how good He is. Because until they know Him, they can't experience that goodness anyway. Amen? First mission for a Christian, no matter where they're at, no matter what they're doing, no matter where they go, is to always have an answer for that hope that lies within them. It's our first mission. And, and what is that answer? It's Jesus. You, you don't need to give a long dissertation about how many scriptures you know, and you don't need to make it sound better than you think it can. You need to say just as simply as what I said, do you know Jesus? And then if you don't, you can. You know what? This fear you have today, we can eliminate that. We can take care of that problem right now because we know the author of life. And the author of life, makes when you receive him, you pass from death unto life, not from life unto death. Amen. Amen. You can now begin to give somebody hope who has Jesus. Amen. But, but it's not what you know that they need to hear. It's what they can receive. And what he could receive that day was just what we gave him. And it was a 
One minute. And, th and that's all God had us do. Now, hopefully, maybe somebody came alongside of that and continued with that. That was our part. That's redeeming the time. That's making the most of being at a place you didn't want to be anyway. Amen. Right? Yeah. But, but when you know God's with you, you're taking something greater into every place you go. So no matter what situation you find yourself in, if you know God's with you, then you have an ability to do things because you have the love of God in you. This is a big responsibility because what we've done is we said, ah, I, I, God loves me. And, and we've learned about how God loves me. And what we need to learn about now after we learn about how much he loves you is how much he'll love through you. Amen. How much that love will come out. And, and you have now ability and responsibility to do things and say things that, that others don't have. You know, that's why a lot of people want to remain ignorant. Right? <laughs> well, just think, if I wouldn't have known anything about that, I wouldn't have said anything to this man. I'd have just said, well, you know, hopefully you know Jesus, because it's going to be a really painful ride, but, you know, and it's going to really hurt, and the death is not good. And, and, but, but one day, you'll have that mansion over in glory. <laughs> You know, and, and, and it would have been a really kind of a sad thing and, and given him only the afterlife to look forward to instead of the push to get there. Amen? And, and with the knowledge that God had put in me through the word of Brother Moore in, in this series, and not the word of Brother Moore, word of God through Brother Moore, but that I, we were able to minister and we were able to be at a place and help somebody, whereas otherwise we wouldn't have been. Amen? Amen. And, and that's what a neighbor is. Right? Yes. You know, how many people used to watch Mr. Rogers? <laughs> yeah. And he said, would you be my neighbor? Right? Yep. God's saying, would you be a neighbor? Mm. Right? Can you say neighbor? Sure you can. <laughs> sure you can. <laughs> can you say all love? Come on, kids. Sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> would you be a neighbor? Would you be somebody that God could use at any moment, at any given time, to do those things? You know, and, and it's not convenient. Would you be somebody who's willing to be inconvenienced, Amen. right, to further the kingdom of God? Amen. And it's going to cause your plan to get messed with. The other day, not, not too long ago, I'm driving to work. And there's a vehicle in the middle of this busy road up here, just sitting there, nobody in it. I passed by it, and I'm like, that's really dangerous. So I called Jeff, man, you know, to say, hey, you know, might want to let somebody know. He's a deputy. And so I called him and let him know about it, and thinking, well, that, that's a nice thing to do. It'll get it out of the road. And somehow or another, I got turned around and went back, and it's still sitting there, but this time there's a guy in it working on it, middle of the road. It's on a curve. It's not a safe place. I passed by. I passed by. <laughs> and, I'm, and I started heading back to what I'm doing. Why? Because I got stuff to do, you know. I'm in the ministry. I got stuff to do. <laughs> right? You know what? I can't just be helping people all the time. I'm in the ministry. <laughs> and I got about a block away, and God said, turn around and help. And I'm like, yeah. Mrs. Moore had just taught that message, if any guys saw, about doing, you know, being a doer and, and helping people and, and letting, the, letting God work through you. And, and then I had just preached a message right after that on a similar thing. <laughs> This proves you got to listen to yourself, huh? <laughs> and so I turned around and I helped. And it wasn't just that I helped. It was that I knew I was at the right place doing the right thing at the right time. I was being a blessing because God wanted me to stop. He didn't want somebody else to stop. Amen. You know, you got people, they say, well, here, here call the church. Yeah. <laughs> you just missed it. You missed it. God didn't tell you to have them call the church. 
right? Fill up their tank with gas, get them going. He had me stop and make sure I put my emergency flashers on so they didn't get hit and wait on them in my busy schedule. <laughs> right? We're much too busy for this. If you're too busy to be good, you're way too busy. I'll guarantee you, if I would have had something going on for Brother Moore or Mrs. Moore specifically at that moment, and that would have happened, and I hadn't stopped, I would have heard something I didn't want to hear, and it would have been a lot of correction. Right? I have watched them stop in the middle of dinner to pray over a waitress with a hand in a cast because they were in an accident. They don't, they'll stop. They will take the time to make sure that what God is leading for that moment happens. Amen. This is important. We, we are witnesses of the goodness of God. It's not about how much you know out of this book. It's how much you'll do out of that book. You know what? If some, if I could have, I could have, I could have, I could have went by that guy, rolled down my window, and said, "The Lord will help you." <laughs> I mean, that is truly be warm and filled, isn't it? <laughs> now, other people pass by that. Does that mean they were wrong? No. God didn't tell them to stop. He told me to stop. He told me to stop. He had me go by him twice before I heard him. Why? Because I'm so busy. Got so much going on. Amen? God is a personal relationship. Church is important and it's corporate. But when you leave the church, you're part of a corporate body that's going out into the world to witness of the goodness of God. And, and, for, and that's, what, that's why He wants you to prosper. That's why He wants you to do well. That's why He wants you to have things and ability because that's how you help people. P people that are listening to this message today and they're sitting there saying, yeah, the Lord needs to get these people to help me. They're missing it right now. Every person that heard, heard everything I've said so far and is thinking about how much other people should help them is missing it. Because I don't care what you have today, you have the love of God. You have Jesus Christ. You have something to offer somebody. And God will put you in the place that what you do have is applicable to that situation. Applicable, huh? Huh? That means that applies. See, I even knew what it meant. Huh? Yeah, huh? I'm getting some kind of degree. I don't know what. <laughs> Glory to God. This is what God wants us to do. Look at Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24, uh, verse 10. It says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Does he say if you faint in the day of your adversity? Mm -mm. No, it's interesting. If you faint in the day of adversity, in other words, if adversity is going on and you faint, if you quit, you pull back, you, you don't help, then you're weak, you're small, your strength is small. What's he saying? You didn't use what I gave you for that situation. It's not just, your, not just your adversity. Did you know that you're going to run into somebody today that's got adversity? Right? And, and whether it's a word, whether it's a handshake with money in it, whether it's a, I don't know what, it, a buy their dinner. You know, I don't know what it would be because God's not telling me what you're supposed to do. Right? Or what I'm supposed to do at this point. But what I do need to do is be prepared for the day of adversity. Why? Because it says go into all the world. It doesn't say go into all the churches and preach the gospel. <laughs> right? So, so it says go into the world. Right? The church and the world are two different. Remember, we're not of the world, but he said go into the world. You got to go into the world. And you guess what's in the world? Adversity. There are bad things happening all the time there is adverse. If you watch the news, you could get so concerned about what's going on, but you don't have to. 
And besides that, watching the news is not going to make you love the people talking. <laughs> right? Do you know that it's easier to love somebody when you don't know their political affiliation sometimes? <laughs> but you have to love them even when you do. Amen. And, and that's the thing. For, for us to step back and watch some of these things going on and say, and say you know what, those people are messed up. That, that's not the way we should say it. Say, oh, Lord. They're messed up. Their, their, their thinking is skewed. Lord, what can I do to help? Not what can I do to make sure they don't get hurt. What can I do to help them so they don't get hurt the wrong way? Amen? Amen. Guess what? People that believe wrong things are going to hell. Not politically wrong things. But if they don't believe in Jesus Christ, they can believe in any other God they want to. That's their choice, but without Jesus. If we're watching the news, if we're watching a TV program, we need to keep in mind that every person Jesus died for. And every person on this earth, He loves as much as He loved you. And He doesn't even care what they're doing or did. He doesn't judge whether or not Jesus went to the cross and rose again for them on a basis of what they did. Right? Amen. He forgave the worst of the worst of the worst in our book. And guess who was one of them? Me, Me and you. Me and you. We were in the same line they were in. I don't care who you can think about, the most evil, vile person that you think ever existed, Think about them, and you were in the same group at one time. So there's no one we can't love. It's a responsibility and, a, and an ability. It gives us the ability to do good in situations where others won't. Not just they can't, they won't. Because they don't have, the, they don't have it in them to do. Amen? Did I say go to Proverbs 24? Oh yeah, that's where we were. Look at verse 11. Okay, look at it in the NIV so it makes sense. There we go. <laughs> Rescue those, and this is, goes along with verse 10. Remember, it says, in the, if you faint in the day of adversity, so now he's talking about people who aren't going to faint in the day of adversity, right? Rescue those being led away to death. Hold back those staggering towards the slaughter. Look at that in the uh, Bible in basic English or basic Bible English or BBE. BBE. Be the savior of those who are given up to death. In other words, everybody that said, you know what, you messed up too bad, forget it. What's he saying? You be their savior. He's not saying be Jesus, but he's saying be there for them. Be their neighbor. What do they need? What, what could help them through that? Because you know what? No matter what happens at the end of that, they're going one place or the other. Right? It's not a decision after that. And then it says, and do not keep back help from those who are slipping into, into destruction. If you see somebody that's going off the wrong way, doing the wrong things, it's not time to say, watch them. They're, they are messing up. Stay away. Stay away. Hold back from doing, you know, don't get near. The Bible says don't even eat with those people. <laughs> I didn't ask you to eat with them. I asked you to help them. Amen. You know what? You go eat with somebody and make it worse than it was before. Help them. That's what he said. Help them from slipping into destruction. In other words, what do you got? You got whatever God tells you to do to help them at that time. You'll have something. Look at the next verse, though. This is the most interesting one. If you say, we didn't know about this. In other words, if you make excuses for not helping, it's not going to work out well for you. Now, <laughs> If you say, oh, God, I'm sorry, I missed that. I just didn't know. You did know every day we know people are hurting. Every day we know. And, you know, people say, here I am, Lord, send me. And, and then they're just like me. They had to pass by the truck twice before they stop. 
And God's saying, put your hand down or do what I said. <laughs> right? Here I am, Lord. Send me where I want to go. <laughs> Send me exactly where I want to be. <laughs> right? Because I know what I can do. You don't. That's what you're saying. And he's saying, I've put things in you you don't even know. Things that would help people that you've never met. Things that would lift up people that have been around you for years and hurting. Things that would change situations that you never thought could change. But I knew they could. The Lord knew they could. Amen? And, and it's not about what we want to do. It's, it's inconvenient to be a neighbor. Right? The other day, actually, we had just went through one of the treatments. And, and it, it had made Kim feel really bad. And she was in bed. And, and I was actually at the hospital sitting with somebody else in Springfield. And I'm calling her. And I can't get her on the phone. And when I left, she wasn't feeling good. Well, I'm spiritual, but I got flesh. <laughs> right? And, and I'm starting to worry. And I'm just going to tell you. Right? And I'm praying, Lord, I know she's okay. And, and I try. And an hour later, I still ain't heard back. Well, I got flesh, okay? Mm -hmm. She was okay. You see her right there. <laughs> but I couldn't see her. I couldn't talk to her. And I didn't know. And mess up or not, the, the house that got built, the French, the French country house or country French, whatever it's called, it was next door to my house. I called Ed. I said, Ed, here's my garage door code. Go over there. See what Kim's got going. Ed walks in. It wasn't convenient. I didn't say, Ed, what are you doing? Do you have time to go over to my house? <laughs> right? I said, Ed, I need help. Guess what? Ed said, okay, I'll help. And that's what Kim told him when she finally woke her up. When he finally woke her up, he said, you're a good neighbor, Ed. <laughs> And he was a good neighbor, but you know what? He helped me that day because I wasn't being very spiritual. I needed rescuing. I, need, I needed somebody to pull me back from slipping over. Amen. Why? Because I wasn't walking in the spirit that day. I was, walk, I was trying, but my wife didn't feel good and I couldn't get her on the phone. Amen. And I'm, I'm an hour at least away. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Love me? Got it. <laughs> just, just love me and like it. Amen? But that helped me. And that's what being a neighbor is. Being a neighbor is not a convenient task. Being a neighbor is not just living next to somebody. It is so much more. Go to, uh, in fact, we'll just look at the parable. How about that? Go to Luke. Go to Luke. Whoo! You like this? Yes. Hope so, because it's all I got. <laughs> this is what he gave me. Huh? Look at Luke 10, 28. Uh, 27, how about that? They uh, were asking Jesus, what's the greatest of all the commandments? And of course, Jesus said, you know what it is. What, what, are, what is it? And he said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God. This is uh, one of the Pharisees answering this. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love, you can put love in there because that's what he's talking about. And love your neighbor as yourself. And, th and that's what he's saying. That this is the greatest commandment. That you love the Lord and you love your neighbor as yourself. Next verse. He said, you've answered right. Do this. What's he saying? He's saying, you know it. Are you going to do it? That's what he's saying to everybody. Everybody said, if, if, if I ask every person in this place today what was the greatest commandment, they would have quoted me this. And the next thing would have been, are you doing it? Are you doing it? And, and that's the key to it. It's not knowing it. It's not what you know. It's what you do. Brother Morris taught us over and over again, you got to be a doer of the word. It's not a knower of the word. Right? It's not a knower of the church. <laughs> right? Amen. Glory. I'm not going to even say the next thing. Verse 29. 
But this guy, he wanted to justify himself. In other words, I only want to help who I want to help, or better yet, I only want to love. And see, that's what we're really saying when we say, I want to do it my way. I only want to love who I want to love. Well, then you're only going to use your love. Right? If you only want to love who you want to love, then the love of God will not be what you're going to use. Because the love of God loves everybody. You can't, you can't take out the love of God and say, okay, God, love this person through me. You take the love of God out and it goes like that. And, you, and it loves everybody in its path. Because it cannot be held back. It is all consuming and it will do for anyone that asks. Anyone that asks, the love of God will help. Amen? Amen. Amen? Anyone. So for us to say, I, I only want to love who I want to love, and that's what he's saying. He's saying, I just want to make sure we're, we're on the same page here, Jesus. I don't have time to love everybody. <laughs> right? I don't have time to stop and help somebody get gas in their car and then go spend my money to fill up their tank and buy them a soda. They should have bought me a soda. <laughs> No, they shouldn't. God just does it all. He just does it all. Amen? Amen. And for those who don't like soda, I still bought one. <laughs> bought myself one too. Liked it. That's all I'm going to say about that. Verse 30. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went from, Jericho, went from Jerusalem to Jericho, so more, more than likely a Jewish man, right? Went from Jerusalem to Jericho. And he fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. So this would be a man having a day of adversity. Right? He's having a full day of adversity. Now, you know, you got, I was reading stuff about this. You know, you can Google or Bing or whatever about anything and find out just information, general information about the road from Jericho to Jerusalem and things like that. And there's all kinds of things about that. But the truth of the matter is, is it probably shouldn't have been on this road. If you read about this road at the time he was there, wrong place, wrong time. Right? Other people were on the road, but he was on the road, wrong place, wrong time. How many people have went somewhere when they shouldn't have huh? and got in trouble, needed some help? Thank you, Jesus, for mercy. Mercy. We all need mercy. Every day of our life, we need mercy. That's why it's new every day of your life, because you're going to need mercy today, tomorrow, the next day, next year. Every day of your life, you're going to require mercy. People say, oh, I don't do something wrong every day. You're going to require mercy. You live in the earth. Just your protection alone is going to require mercy. Right? You know, if you walk through a field and there's a hole underneath the grass that you don't see and you miss it, that was God's mercy. Right? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so he was left half dead. Um, he was left in adversity, if you will say. So the next verse... And by chance there came a certain priest that way. And when he passed by, or when he saw him, you know what? He, he had to see somebody that was part of the church. Right? He had to see a man hurting, even if he wasn't a part of the church. What if he said, oh, that's Joe. He hadn't been to church in months. <laughs> I got to go. Hmm? Maybe he did. You know what? Judging people on, on, their, on, on why they're in their circumstance. Well, what if God would have judged you on why you weren't saved? You're not saved because you have sin. Judgment. The end. We'd all be on our way to hell right now. God judged us according to mercy. He didn't look at us according to what we'd been doing, what we were going to do, what, what we might do someday. He, he judged us because he loved us. And, and this is someone who is absolutely not walking in the love of God. They're not walking in even a human love at this point, but yet they're a priest. And, and you know, a lot of people say, 
stuff like, well, the, you know, you're a pastor, you got to help. You know, I, first of all, two, two things about that. The pastor can't help everybody. That's why there's a congregation. <laughs> it, 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 he can't even be a pastor if he's got to do everything. You know, I've walked into places where people say, well, you're not Brother Moore, and I say, I am today. Right? He sent me. Good news. Better yet, God sent me. So I'm Jesus today. Amen? You know, people are looking at this in ways that they shouldn't look. On the other hand, this priest, it's not that he was a priest, it's that he wasn't a neighbor. You know, God, when, when this man asked this question, he asked, who's my neighbor? And what Jesus begins showing him is who is a neighbor, not who is his neighbor. What he begins showing him is what a neighbor is not like and what a neighbor is like. Amen? This man was not a neighbor. He was a priest and he said, I don't got time for this. Heading over here, got, got a meeting, got too many things to do. He's half dead anyway, be dead in an hour. Right? right? You know, if you don't know about it, then it's okay, right? <laughs> right? How many things do we pass by that we don't ever have to know the end of it so it doesn't bother us? That's it. You know what? I want to be on call all the time. Not on call to you, on call to God. Right? People say, well, give us your phone number, Dave. No, 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 no. I had, a, I had a, many years ago, I had a lady call me in the three in the morning. Said she had demons in her ceiling. I said, well, rebuke them and go back to sleep. Quit calling me at three in the morning. She didn't like that answer. But I learned not to just give my phone number to everybody who asked for my phone number, too. <laughs> not that you guys wouldn't be great with it. <laughs> but we want to be a neighbor. We don't want to be this guy. Next guy. He was a Levite. He was a servant in the church. And he came on the place and he looked on him. He... Hmm. You know what? I wonder if he had a church card that day. Call the church. Call the church, they'll help you. I don't want to get involved in this. There's going to be a court case in here, and you're going to have to find out what's going on. I'll have to take you to the hospital and sit with you. I don't want to do that. I got things to do. What did he have? He had his own plan, right? He looked at the situation. He got a little closer to it than the priest, but he went on by. A neighbor is not the person you send somebody to. It's who you are. Right? Right? Now, we, you know, a lot of people say, well, these guys just didn't have the ability. They could have had the ability. They were, they'd been in the synagogue. They'd been in the church, whatever form of church they have. They knew the commandment that Jesus just spoke about. Obviously, this guy wasn't neighborly enough. Amen? And, 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 you know, a lot of people, they want to pass out somebody else's help, but they don't want to help themselves. And their first words all the time are, I didn't have the ability to help them. You did. You weren't listening to God. You had something in you that they needed right then. It, it, you might not have had a dollar in your pocket, but you had something that they needed right then. And it wasn't called the church. Right? <laughs> well, this isn't popular. I have to go up here and preach this one. I don't think you guys could throw that far. <laughs> guys, I don't want people to call the church. I want to be able to help somebody. I want to know that God put it in me to help in every situation He puts me in. Right. Amen? Now, when I'm operating in the church and somebody calls the church and I'm operating as the associate at this church, then yes, they're calling the church. But if I'm out on the road, 
if I'm out of this building, if I'm at, then I, I should be able to help these people without saying, ooh, you need Brother Moore. Right? Yeah, Brother Moore is the only one that really could help you. You call Brother Moore. Do you know that we got people that won't even hear unless Brother Moore says it? <laughs> they won't. <laughs> we got people that shut their screens off today while I started. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, you missed out because if you just got to look at how pretty I was, it'd be enough. <laughs> but if the Lord told the Moors to put me here today, then I got to believe I could say something. Right? That made a difference. And, 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 that, and Brother Moore and Mrs. Moore, they got a whole week of meetings coming up. But you still got people say, oh, they should have been here. They should have done that. They should have done that. Stop that. You, you, you got enough trouble letting the Lord lead you, let alone letting the Lord lead them. Right? I can't... I can't be led. You know what? For me to tell the Lord, tell you what the Lord's telling you to do, I got. I had to have Ed go wake my wife up. <laughs> Some people won't like that. I love them. Amen. Amen. This guy, I don't know what he did, but he didn't help him. He didn't take the time. What? He didn't have time to do. What the Lord, they, they weren't, see, that's what you got to get. They weren't passing by this place by accident. This wasn't happening just because. You know, everybody says, well, it's just chance. Just, just, just what happens. No, God sent them that way on that time, that moment to be a help. They missed it. We miss it all the time. There's no telling how many times that we pass by a situation and we didn't do anything to help. We didn't even begin to do anything to help because it didn't concern us. Do you know that everything that concerns God should concern us? Amen. Now, He's not going to have you help everything because you can't. But if He puts you in this place where you can actually go look on them, then don't just look on them and walk away. I don't want to do that anymore. Amen. Do y'all? No. I don't want to be that person. I want to be the next guy. The next guy. Their enemy. The next guy. He was their enemy. Verse 33. But a certain Samaritan. They didn't even like Samaritans. Do you know there was a road that you could walk around just so you didn't go through Samaria? And the Jewish people would take that road just so they didn't go through it. So they considered them their enemy. Right? <laughs> what would their enemy do? But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was and saw him and loved him. What happened? The love of God that was in him went out towards him. And when the love of God comes in, something begins to act. In other words, it's no longer a be warm and filled. You know, you don't just drive by and say, oh, Lord, help them. Help them. Oh, my goodness. No. <laughs> and then drive on. Lord, I sure hope you help them. And the Lord's saying, I just was trying to, and you kept going. <laughs> All right. I'm not saying stop and help everybody, but the ones that He tells you to do. And, and lots of times that's all He wants is for you. He'll say, pray for that person. But the next question I want to have is, should I stop, Lord? And I've been doing that, you know, because, of course, we're taught never pick up hitchhikers, right? Have you been taught that? Yeah. Yes. Kids never pick up hitchhikers. <laughs> right? But if the Lord told you to pick one up, and you were certain it was the Lord, would you do it? Or would you be so engulfed and don't pick up hitchhikers <laughs> that's a tough one because I'm sitting here thinking about my daughter and I'm thinking if she asked me if she could pick one up I'd say no 
But Dad, I know it's the Lord telling me no. <laughs> Lord, I, I, Dad, I know I could help him. No. Probably what I'd do is I'd say, stay right there. I'll be there in a minute. And then you can pick him up. And I'm not saying pick up hitchhikers, okay? By no means, on the internet, no. no. I'm saying be led of the Lord to do everything you're supposed to do at the time you're supposed to do it. If it's just pray, then pray. But if you're supposed to stop and give them $20, if you're supposed to stop or give them a, a bottle of water, if you're supposed to stop and, and, and just say, hey, I know you're having a tough day. Can I pray with you? Can, is there something I can go get you and bring it back to you? But, but it, that's going to take your time. Yeah. Do, do you guys think that this man was going somewhere? Right? He had a plan. He wasn't on the road by accident. He was going somewhere. He wasn't coming to see if anybody had been robbed and beaten and left for half dead. That wasn't his plan for the day. It was inconvenient for him to have to stop. But yet, I never see where he told this man how inconvenient he was being. Do you know if you stop and help somebody and you tell them how inconvenient it is, it's really not going to be a blessing to them? I'm going to stop and help you, but i got places to be, so let's get this done quick, okay? <laughs> right? I need you to get in your car, I need you to come, follow me, I need to get you some gas, and I need you to get out of the way. Because i got stuff going on. I am way more important than you are, so let me be important. Huh? This man had stuff going on. He was, he was on his way somewhere. But here's the good news. He had full ability. He had full ability. Why? Because he had compassion. If we'll have compassion, the ability of God now is what begins to help us. We become a neighbor. We become somebody who can help, somebody who can, who can bring healing, somebody who can bring answers, somebody who can take them to the right place, at the right to, somebody that can head them in a new direction. And sometimes somebody that can take them somewhere. Right? Verse 34. And he went to him and he bound up his wounds. What did he do? He became a doctor. It doesn't say he was a doctor. It says he was a Samaritan. Do you reckon he was a doctor? No, but he had something to wrap up his wounds with. wonder if he was carrying bandages. Or I wonder if he tore up some of his own clothes. Wow, now that's inconvenient. That was a shirt I was going to preach in tonight. Oh, that's my favorite shirt. That's the shirt that I love the most. You're just going to have to bleed, brother. Huh? What do you reckon he was doing with oil? You know, one thing that people that are expecting to help people do, they prepare to help people. We had a man in the church I went to years ago, and in the wintertime, you know, they tell you to put so many things in your car. Well, he tripled what he put in his car. Because he wasn't going out to help himself. He was going out to be a help. So like everything he needed for himself, he put in three times what he would need because he would stop and help every person on the road that was stuck in bad weather. And the weirdest thing about this guy, he was always happy. Phew, did you just hate that? And all those happy people? Right? Oh, you're so, you're so good. You stop and help people. We're jealous. Because you didn't think of it first. He, you know why he was happy? Because that's what God wanted him to do. That was his ministry. Do you know that that's our ministry? Helping others? That's what we're called to do. We're called to be this guy. So whether you have oil and wine or whether you have bandages or whatever, you can find some. Right? That's what love does. Right? It doesn't, love doesn't just appease somebody with a prayer. Love does something afterwards. You know, so many times we come to people and say, oh, just let me pray with you. And all you're trying to do is appease them and make them feel good that you prayed. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's quiet, right? It, when it, so many times, well, let me pray. 
I got, you know, somebody will come to you and say, oh, I got this problem. I got this. Oh, this is going on. And, and, I, and, I, and I just need $10. And you say, well, let me pray with you. <laughs> they just need $10. Just need $10. Let me pray. Let me make you feel better about needing that $10. <laughs> right? If I could just make you feel good. You know, love sometimes won't appease you. It'll tell you what you don't want to hear. Right? Love, love sometimes tells people that do need, that they need to do something. We've got to be willing to love at all circumstances, all, at all times. Amen? He stopped, bound up his wounds, Right? And then he said, okay, here's the church card. Call them next, right? You know, th that's the thing about being a good neighbor. It doesn't stop there. You know, the bad thing for Ed and Karen is not only do they live next door to me that day, they still do. <laughs> sometimes the cat needs in. Sometimes the dog needs fed. <laughs> <laughs> it is a truth. If you are a good neighbor, you are always a good neighbor. It's not a one-time deal. This isn't something that this guy did on just this occasion. This is who he was. This, this, this is who we are. This is what we do. This, this, is, this, this is when we wake up in the morning, we're expecting to be a part of somebody's life in some way that can be a help to them. And we're not going to call the church. We don't going to need, if we do call the prayer line, it's to, it's to get in agreement that the Lord will strengthen us to do what he's called us to do. He put the situation in your eyes. He put the situation in your heart. Amen? And the church is, is, is should be in prayer, in agreement with you. And in many times, sometimes the church will help if they can go further than what you can go. But that's not your answer. If that's your answer, you're saying, I'm not a neighbor, but the church is. <laughs> do you know that if everybody does that, <laughs> the church will never do what it's really put here to do? Right? They'll just become a distribution, a distribution point for people in need all the time and not really preach the gospel, just distribute money. That didn't seem popular either. <laughs> Do you know that sometimes people say, you know what, I, I got this going on in my life, and God will say, give them a hundred bucks. You know, I'll, I'll just tell you this, the other day I missed it. We're, we're about to close. But I, I actually did miss it because we've all been praying for God to bring opportunities into our life, right? Since Mrs. Moore's message and several other messages, we've been looking for opportunities to be a blessing, not just to the body of Christ, but to all men. Amen. You know the verse that Karen read this morning in, out of Galatians? It says, it says don't, get, don't grow weary in, in doing well. But, but it says, later it says, to do your good works to all men, especially the household of faith. First thing you're supposed to do is do your good works to all men. Right? Amen. Glory to God. What was I talking about before I went there? Oh, where well, I missed it. Well, you guys remember that, didn't you? Yeah. Uh-huh. Easier to look at me than look at you, isn't it? Yeah, so, so it wasn't long after I was able to uh, be a blessing, and actually not, God really was gracious to me and allowed me to help the person on the road. And the, the same gas station that I went to to get them gas... Um, I walked inside later that, that week, I think it was, it was just that week, and uh, was uh, buying a soda. For you don't like soda, uh, sorry, I was buying a soda. Get over it. It was a Mountain Dew, if you really want to know, so really get over it. But um, I walked in, and it used to be $2, now it's $2 and a dime. Big story. But... I said, you know what, I, got, I don't want to break that. I got a dime in the truck. I said, I'll go grab a dime. 
And the guy, and he, I was looking through my wallet, and he saw that I had 100 in there. And he said, well, you want me to just hold that 100 and laughed while you go out and get that dime? And I said, if you need to, I will. And I was joking with him, and he was joking with me. And I walked out the door and left. Finally, after I left, God said, There's, there was an opportunity to give that 100 away, and you didn't do it. Huh. <laughs> I can use me. At least you don't have to feel bad. And I, and I don't feel bad. God will give me another opportunity. It was a learning point in my life. But if we're going to ask for opportunities and we're going to be a neighbor, then we've always got to be on guard for our flesh to not let us try to not let us see something that simple. Because $100 is nothing compared to the witness of Jesus Christ in somebody's life. Right. If that would have opened a door for me to just crawl in just a little bit, it would have been well worth $100, wouldn't it? Plus, you can't sell $100 without getting much, much more than that back. Right? Everything we do in our sowing, in our giving, in our, in our going, in our doing, it, it should be about people. It shouldn't be about me. It shouldn't be about what can God do for me. It should be about what can God do for me so I can do for others. If we stop with what God, what can God do for me, then we're not putting God first because God first is others first. And, and, and in being a neighbor... If you look at the last part of that verse, or that, that story, actually, parable. He said, uh, on the morrow, the next day, verse 35, when he departed, uh, actually the verse before that, he said he, he put him on his donkey, right? On his ride. <laughs> right? I'm not going to give you my ride, then I got to walk. This neighbor stuff's really starting to get inconvenient, isn't it? Man, God's going to use my money. He's going to use my oil and my wine. going to tear up my new shirt. And then he wants me to walk while this guy's on my donkey. This stuff's crazy. This isn't what I signed up for. I just wanted to go to heaven one day. <laughs> he took... And then, so he, he put him on his donkey, headed towards town on his own beast. He said, uh, put, him in the, put him in the hotel. What? I got to pay, pay for their hotel too? <laughs> you know, at no point in time did he call the church and ask for them to help. He didn't call his, his, his best friend and say, hey, I got a guy here that needs help. You want to sew into it? <laughs> Not that I've ever done that. <laughs> How many of y'all would like to sew into this project? <laughs> oh, God's good. He's merciful. Thank you, Lord. Back to verse 35. He, gave, he not only paid for his hotel, he said, here, let me pay for a little longer. It's going to take him a little longer. I'm not just going to pay for the night. I'm going to pay for anything that comes up afterwards. If he has to stay a week, then I want to pay for a week. Right? You wonder why we don't have so many neighbors. <laughs> right? I'm, I'd be like one of those neighbors that... <laughs> I don't want to get too involved. I might have to do something. Amen? He said, he said, take care of whatever he needs. And if it costs more than the time he's here, I'll take care of it. You know what's really cool? These people knew him. You don't, you don't just go to a place and tell somebody, I'll come back and take care of you. And, and they, they, they say, oh, no, you better leave me your credit card. <laughs> All right? These people knew him. They knew him as what? A good neighbor. They knew him as a neighbor. And then Jesus said in verse 36, which of these three was neighbor? Now this guy asked, who is my neighbor? And Jesus said, which of these three is a neighbor? A neighbor is somebody who will put himself in back 
to get you back out front. A neighbor is somebody who will stand for you when nobody else is. I'm not saying they'll say you're right when you're wrong, but they'll stand for you even when you are wrong. And they'll say, I know, I know they messed up, but they're good people. Right. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. Amen. A neighbor is somebody who will be there, and they don't need to know you. They don't need to know anything about you. How many, what, do you what do you think of the Levite and the priest? They said, sin. He's in sin. That's why he's in that position. Neighbors don't judge. They're not looking for a reason not to help you. Neighbors are always looking for a reason to help you. Amen? Amen? Amen. And God put that ability in us. He said in His Word, He said, I I predestined you, I I created you unto good works that I planned beforehand. I, I created you to do good things that I planned before you could do good things. In other words... I planned for you to do them because I was going to put my good stuff in you to do good things with. And if you're going to have that good stuff, you can do good things. And you can be a neighbor. I can be a neighbor to anyone who needs a neighbor. Not just those who think they need a neighbor, those who truly need a neighbor. Do you know that the people that truly need a neighbor rarely ask? Why? Because... You know, even the the person I stopped and helped, he said, oh, no, I got it. He tried to get me to go on. Oh, I got it. And I'm like, well, God told me to stop. I'm not going on. I've already missed this twice. You're trying to get me to do it the third time. Three strikes and I'm out of here. Right? No three times. I'm looking to be a neighbor now. How many neighbors I got in here today? Stand with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, there's people near you and there's people you'll be near. And and you're not always a neighbor to the people that are near you. Sometimes you're a a neighbor to the people you'll be near. And the people you'll be near are on the path that God puts you on for that day. Every person in here is leaving this church and going somewhere today. Who will you be a neighbor to today? There's going to be an opportunity for every person in here to be a neighbor. And people say, well, you mean I got to give away money or I got to get a ride? Or, well, you mean I'm going to find a half dead person? No. <laughs> Somebody may just need a smile. You know, I have watched in restaurants, I've done it and I've been a part of it, where if you'll just go in and be the happiest person they saw all day, that that would be better than the biggest tip you could give them. And then when you give them the biggest tip you could give them, you really make their day. But, but what happened first was you cared about their day. Amen? And so what we want to do is we want to walk out of here in compassion. The, that word mercy, that word compassion, in that verse in in Luke, what it literally meant was an active version of love. An active version. Not not just, oh, I love you. Love you. Hope you have a good day. You know, what would that have done for the guy half dead? Love you, brother. Oh, mm. maybe tomorrow will be better. That's that's not what's going to help somebody. But what will help people is the true compassion of Christ. And every person in here, I'm not talking to anybody who's looking for help. I'm talking to everybody who's looking to be help. And so if you were looking for help, quit and look to be help. And I don't care, if you say, I don't have anything, you do have something. We're going to pray and I'm going to ask God to show us all what we have on our donkey. What we have in our bag. Amen? So everybody that wants to be involved in this, don't, don't, don't raise your hand if you don't want to be involved because we're going to pray. And God's going to use us. And continue. we got a whole week of guests coming in, of people that will be here. Who could you bless? You say, oh, they're ministers. They're all doing so good. You know, <laughs> I would like to put everybody in the ministry that says that. 
Hardest job you'll ever do if you do it as a job. Greatest job you'll ever do if you do it as a call. Everybody raise a hand that, that, that desires to be a neighbor. Raise a hand towards heaven. Pray this with me. Father God, show me where I've been missing it. Show me everything I have and I'll put it at your disposal. Reveal to me everything that you've put in me, that you've given me to help others with that I would not withhold anything that you would use to help others. Lord, I purpose to keep my eyes open on my path every day, looking for every opportunity for people who are hurting, people who need encouragement, people who you just want to love. Lord, I pray, show them to me. Help me to see it. Rearrange my thoughts so that I think like you. Renew my mind so that I see every situation, every circumstance the way you see it and hear clearly my part in being a neighbor. And we purpose by faith to walk it out to be inconvenienced for our flesh to have to be put under so that your spirit the Holy Spirit the Spirit of God in us can reign and rule in our lives and be a help in the lives of every person in our path help us Lord to love like you love in Jesus' name, amen. You got a song? This big light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This big light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This big, this big light of mine, oh, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. a good God and he'll show us stuff before it's too late Did you know that there's people that you know that are happy people doing great things and, and just seem like their life's great but they don't know Jesus you know what everybody that doesn't know Jesus isn't sad because they don't know what they're missing sometimes and, and their life's not a wreck right <laughs> that doesn't mean they know Jesus don't take it for granted. And I'll just tell you a story. I was talking to my younger brother the other day, and he was talking about somebody that had went home early. And I said, well, did they know Jesus? He goes, you know, that's what kind of makes me sad. I don't know that. And I thought, huh. And he said, now I'm not going to do that anymore. Let's not take it for granted that everybody's just okay. Amen? He'll put us in positions next to somebody, smiling and laughing, and say, man, you are really happy. You must know Jesus. He said, no, I don't. I said, wow, you want to be happier than you are right now? Right? He'll put us in a place to, to be a witness to every person we can. Amen? Amen. This little light of mine. come forward good news if you don't know Jesus in this place today 
we're going to pray a prayer because I would not want you to leave without me getting the opportunity to pray with you. So if you don't know Jesus in here, we're all going to affirm, reaffirm our faith, raise a hand before heaven. Every person in here, pray it out loud. People say, I already know Jesus. I don't need to. You know what? It's a good affirmation. Amen. So let's affirm it again. Father God, I believe in you. I believe you love me. I believe in your son, Jesus, that he died on a cross, that he paid the full price for all my sins. And you raised him from the dead and he's seated with you forever making intercession for me. Father, I love you. Jesus, I confess you as Lord of my life. And as you help me, I will serve you from this day forward. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I, I appreciate y'all listening so good today. God's helping us. Amen. You're going to have opportunities. So we ought to have a lot of testimonies about taking opportunities. Opportunities that we took, not the ones we missed. Right? Because those wouldn't be testimonies. Those would be prayer requests. Amen. If you received Jesus today or came back to Jesus, need someone to pray with you about anything else or just want somebody to rejoice with you, man, these people here, good rejoicers. Man, they, they can do it. That's why we got them up here, professionals. Went straight to the pros. Amen. So it, don't leave here. We're going to be dismissed. If you, got, if you received Jesus today, tell somebody. It is the greatest thing that ever happened to you and somebody needs to know. Amen? Glory to God.